Hello, this is Voices of the Rainbow. I'm Robert Ranke. Uh, I'd like to welcome our new affiliate in Boulder. Uh, we're now in Denver, Littleton, Boulder, so welcome Boulder people to the group over here. And I'd like to uh, uh, honor this day, uh, World AIDS Day, and dedicate this program to Jeff Davis, who was a driving force behind the People with AIDS Coalition and the founder of Resolute. Uh, we have today three guests. Uh, the first guest is Kevin Sean Cady, who is a member of the Community Advisory Board and who is also writing a book on gay men and unprotected sex. Um, we also have with us Jan Van Sickle, who is working with the Empowerment Program and a uh, coordinator of the Women's AIDS Project. And we also have uh, Tom Gibson, who is the uh, chairman of the Community Advisory Board. So I'd like to just start out and, and have each of the uh, guests introduce themselves a little bit and, and give us a little background of, of what their groups are all about. I'll, I'll start with you, Kevin. Okay, well, Tom and I serve on the Community Advisory Board for uh, Project WIN, and uh, Project WIN is, uh, is an, a study for a, a vaccine, an HIV vaccine, uh, around the country. And uh, I'll let Tom go into in depth more about about the study. But uh, we both are participants in the study, and for the last year and a half, we've served on the community advisory board for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Uh, and, and the Women's AIDS Project is part of a larger nonprofit organization called the Empowerment Program. Uh, Empowerment Program has been in existence for ten years now and the Women's AIDS Project has been in operation since 1989. And we provide services to women with AIDS. We also have about half of our staff involved in prevention. Um, so we do a lot of work with women at risk as well as direct services to women with HIV and AIDS. As Kevin said, um, Project WIN is a part of a larger group um, <coughs> studying HIV preventative vaccines, the larger group being HIVNET. Um, there are currently eight sites around uh, the United States as well as several other international sites um, that are trying to uh, come up with a vaccine to prevent uh, HIV infection. Mm -hmm. um, the Denver site is called Project WIN and uh, has a cohort of 675 men uh, currently participating in a vaccine preparedness study. Um, the study is essentially gathering people's attitudes on, uh, on vaccines um, with the hopes that uh, vaccine trials will be occurring in the near future. Hmm. Well, that gives us a, a little background about each of your groups. Maybe we can talk about where we're going in the future, um, give the people some idea of what we're looking forward to. Can, can we start with you on that? Where is your group headed? Sure. Um, for women, there are a lot of, of issues that ha have been addressed partially in the past but need to get addressed more fully in the future. Um, some of those have to do with economic barriers to women. You know, I'm sure everybody's aware that, that women earn 70-some cents um, to the dollar for the average man. And that means that, that women who are either at risk or have HIV or AIDS also have greater economic implications to, to their care, to their being able to access services. Um, as things get better for women in general, I think things will get better uh, for women living with HIV and AIDS as well. But we need to make sure that programs are accessible to women, uh, whether it's our program at the Women's AIDS Project or any other services in the Denver metro area that those economic issues are looked at in terms of being able to provide women with transportation money, mm -hmm. um, with um, some support for getting time off of work for medical care. Mm -hmm. um, another big issue for women is the child care issue and we me need to make sure that any place that provides services for women or, or even adjunct services like um, retreats things like that, that there's provisions made for women to, to bring their children um, or to have them cared for. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking to support those things. We're looking to support women's programs um, that can provide some gender specific services to women. Um, there's good models for that in, in the um, substance abuse communities. 
um, that show that women really make better use of services uh, when staff and counselors and support services are, are, are provided by women for women. Mm -hmm. oh, how large of a group are we talking about here? Uh, a group of clients in, in the Denver area? In general, in, in women with AIDS in general. In the Denver metro area, mm -hmm. um, the Colorado Department of Health tells us that there are about 400 women infected with HIV or AIDS. Mm -hmm. At the Women's AIDS Program, as of this date today, we serve 106 of those women. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't, isn't it true that women are one of the fastest growing groups of people with AIDS? That's really true. Um, in some of the other populations, the, the numbers have leveled off or even decreased, but women are continuing to increase. Um, in the 1994-95 Colorado um, surveillance reports, mm -hmm. there were um, only 8% of the new cases were women, but from 95 to 96, uh, there were 13.2% of those were women. So it's, it's still a growing group, um, and so prevention efforts really need to be stepped up with the women as well. Is, is Denver uh, typical of other large U.S. cities? It is. That 13 percent um, figure is pretty consistent throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. I see. And are there other, it, does your group extend also nationally? Are you working with other groups similar to yours in other cities? Well, Empowerment Program is, is just one nonprofit specific to Denver. There are other organizations in other states that, that we do meet at conferences and, and trainings. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly we try to coordinate our services with the other service providers in the Denver metro area. Mm -hmm. So keying in then on, on, on some of the areas that you're going to focus on, you say uh, child care is, is one particular issue. Um, the income level of women generally is lower than that of men, so that's another issue. And, and you're really trying to focus on giving a care, to more gender sensitive care. Right. And another population that we're really trying to reach is women who have sex with women. Mm -hmm. Because there's not a lot of information out there about uh, lesbian transmission. Right. We know that it happens. We don't know exactly how. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really looking to get more information on that. And, and we do have um, a lot of lesbian women involved in our project. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to provide services to all women uh, who need service in the Denver metro area. Do you think women are becoming aware of the, the difficulties associated? You know, that's a good question. Obviously, the word is getting out to, to some of the women. Part of the problem is that uh, when you look at, at risky behaviors mm -hmm. um, or at-risk populations, um, part of the problem is that the, the transmission for women now is primarily heterosexual sex. Mm -hmm. And so a woman may be not herself having any high-risk behavior. She may be in a monogamous relationship with a man whom she believes is also being monogamous with her. So she may not see herself at risk at all. Mm -hmm. But in fact, her partner may be a man who has sex with other men, or he may be an IDU, mm -hmm. and have risk. He, he is the one, maybe, who has the risk factors, and she doesn't even see that. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't get tested because she doesn't know she's at risk. And that's a big group of women that we're trying to reach um, to get the information out to. And then, and one more question. Um, in which ways are you going about making uh, women aware? Um, we do have street outreach efforts, uh, which reaches a lot of the IDU women and, and uh, women sex workers. Um, we have women who, who, as I said, do street outreach and who also are in the county jails a couple of times a week doing outreach. The harder audience to reach is the women for whom the risk factor is really with their partner. Right. And we're looking at, at ways to do that. How do you reach the partners of, of maybe the clients at the methadone clinics? Okay. Um, well, we're going to we're working on. We're going to have to cut to a break real quick right now, but perhaps we can develop that a little bit more when we come back. Thank you. The east side and west side clinics are very, actually very small and homey feeling to me. Um, you know, it, it's not, I, I don't ever feel like I'm just some number that nobody cares about, like I thought I was going to feel. Because before I felt so isolated and alone, and once you get into the system, you figure out that you're really not, you know. It just takes that, yeah. it takes courage, I guess, and a little bit of faith that the people you're going to rely on are really there to help you. 
If you are HIV positive, early care can make a difference. Call 291-7826. Hello, we're back again with Kevin, Sean, Katie, and Jan Van Sickle, and Tom Gibson, and uh, we're discussing where we're going to be going in the future with some of the groups we're working with here. Um, we'll focus on you a little bit now, Tom, if we can. Uh, I'd like to know, Project WIN, what, what can we be looking forward to in the future from Project WIN? Uh, well, hopefully, uh, in the very near future, hopefully starting in April next year, we'll be starting phase two testing mm -hmm. of HIV vaccines. Uh, where we've been is might be a, a logical place to start. Um, another group called uh, AVEG, AIDS Vaccine Evaluation Group, has been testing vaccines for the past several years to determine their safety and not so much their effectiveness. Um, and that's phase one testing. Mm -hmm. um, AVEG has come up with um, a combination vaccine, uh, GP120 and uh, another vaccine called Alvac, um, which has the potential um, to uh, prevent um, HIV infection. And they've done the phase one testing and animal testing on uh, those two vaccines. And uh, with any luck um, and with further testing in phase two and phase three testing, um, those vaccines will work and be distributed to the general population. As I said, the phase two testing, which part of which will take place in Denver, hopefully starting in April, um, uh, will be done through Project WIN. And phase three testing, which is a larger population, um, also taking place in, in Denver along with other sites, mm -hmm. um, will take place in 1998. Um, mm -hmm. After that, um, if the, the vaccines are successful, um, it would be distributed to the general population. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the phase two would be starting in April and it would take until 1998 to move to the next phase? Actually, yes. Um, mm -hmm. The phase two testing um, is going to be... Uh, w w the phase one testing was mm -hmm. um, focused on small numbers of people, about 200 participants, mm -hmm. in very low-risk groups for HIV infection, mm -hmm. um, people in monogamous relationships generally, mm -hmm. um, people who wouldn't normally be exposed uh, to HIV. Mm -hmm. um, phase two testing gets a little broader group. As I mentioned earlier, there are eight sites around the country mm -hmm. that are going to be participating in the phase two testing. Mm -hmm. um, the testing is going to be with people who have the potential mm -hmm. to be exposed to HIV, um, the, the Denver cohort um, being part of that, uh, that group that uh, phase two testing would be uh, mm -hmm. taking place with. Um, phase two testing would then continue on for um, actually a, a number of years, mm -hmm. um, but nice. hopefully through um, the first year and a half or so, they could determine um, general safety among the population on which it's being tested, mm -hmm. as well as maybe a little um, efficacy what, if the vaccine is actually effective. We don't know if the vaccine, mm -hmm. vaccines are effective at this point. Um, and then go on to phase three testing, which is more of an efficacy trial to determine if these vaccines do in fact uh, produce an immune response, mm -hmm. um, and if that immune response is the correct immune response mm -hmm. to keep um, or to allow people to prevent HIV infection. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that this timeline could be sped up, or is that possible, is it? Actually, um, on November 6th, 7th, and 8th, mm -hmm. um, the, the scientists involved with the development of the vaccines mm -hmm. um, met in D.C. Um, under the auspices of NIH and NIAID, National Institutes for Allergies and Infectious Diseases, mm -hmm. um, and discussed the timeline. And this is actually a very fast mm -hmm. timeline and progressive mm -hmm. timeline mm -hmm. for uh, vaccine trials, mm -hmm. um, realizing the importance mm -hmm. of HIV vaccines. Now, are the people uh, cho chosen for the uh, experiments or whatnot, how, how would I call that? Um, through your organization? In other words, how could one 
be chosen to be part of the experiment? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, there are eight different sites in the United States mm -hmm. um, that are going to be participating in phase two and phase three testing, Denver being one of them. Mm -hmm. Denver's site is primarily HIV negative gay males. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so to participate in the, the vaccine study that will hopefully be starting in April, what we're doing is recruiting people who may be willing to participate from the vaccine preparedness study, which was going on and has been going on for the past 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, it's currently a cohort of 675 people. Mm -hmm. um, who have been participating for the past 18 months in um, giving responses to their attitudes on HIV vaccines, as well as coming in for periodic testing um, for uh, HIV status. Mm -hmm. And your organization is the, the outreach to, this, to the community in general for this? Yes, actually, uh, Project WIN is Denver specific. Mm -hmm. um, its principal investigators are Frank Judson and John Douglas, two scientists uh, who are heavily involved in, in uh, HIV vaccine research. Mm -hmm. And uh, Project WIN and the Community Advisory Board mm -hmm. are there to um, help uh, the scientists along with recruiting um, mm -hmm. individuals for the vaccine trials as well as um, assisting and looking over the rights of individuals who are participating in the vaccine trials. Okay, I see. And, and are there more than one vaccines? Are these scientists also looking for other alternatives well, at the same time? Or? Th it, that's an interesting question. Uh -huh. Actually, um, AVAG, AIDS Vaccine Evaluation Group, has tested several different vaccines mm -hmm. over the past several years, mm -hmm. um, none of which have made it past phase one testing, the mm -hmm. safety testing. Mm -hmm. um, the vaccines that are currently being tested now are GP120 mm -hmm. and ALVAC. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be given to people in combination. GP120 mm -hmm. is a vaccine um, that's intended to create one type of immune response mm -hmm. um, based on the envelope of the HIV virus. Mm -hmm. um, now the ALVAC is a slightly different vaccine and it's intended to produce an, a different immune response mm -hmm. based on the contents of the inside of the HIV virus. Mm -hmm. So w what they're hoping is the two vaccines uh, will work in combination to produce two different immune responses and help people to prevent HIV infection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to ask you, Kevin, is there anything you'd like to add as far as uh, the community advisory board and, and where that is headed? I know that uh, Tom won't be able to be here for our second half of the second show, but we will be doing another half hour <coughs> and continuing on with this group over here. Um, well, I think one of our uh, big goals with the Community Advisory Board is helping the community to feel comfortable mm -hmm. about a vaccine, mm -hmm. um, to help them feel more educated about it, and to feel hopeful. Mm -hmm. Because especially for the 650 uh, men that uh, Tom was referring to, only a small group of those will be able to participate in this first trial. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know how many, Tom? Actually, it shouldn't be more than 30 participants in the this trial mm -hmm. from the Denver site. Mm -hmm. And so half of those will get the vaccine and then half will get a placebo and it will be what's called a blinded study. Neither the participants nor the staff mm -hmm. down at Denver Health and Hospital will know who here in Denver has gotten the actual vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are a few things that the community needs to be aware of. One that's very important mm -hmm. is that the vaccine can't actually give you HIV. Right. So it's, it's a dead virus, mm -hmm. unlike the polio vaccine, which mm -hmm. kids receive uh, all the time, mm -hmm. uh, which was from, it's from a live virus, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a sort of a, another strain of the live virus. As Tom said, this is the envelope of the virus, so it, there's no way that anyone could get HIV from this vaccine. Mm -hmm. But what we don't know is how effective is it in preventing infection? Mm -hmm. So that's why with this trial, uh, re they've recruited high-risk gay men mm -hmm. because 
uh, in our trial already, out of the uh, initial participants, we've had oh, somewhere in the teens mm -hmm. uh, number of our participants who have already seroconverted and who are now HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So they know that a certain number mm -hmm. of the group of us, uh, because of unprotected sex and being high risk, mm -hmm. will um, become positive. Mm -hmm. Our hope is that the vaccine will prevent that infection mm -hmm. so that there will be exposure to the virus without an actual infection. Mm -hmm. I see. Is this now, how is the um, community advisory board really involved with uh, the WIN? In which way are you related? Project WIN serves as um, an advisory board to assist mm -hmm. um, the, the scientists with issues more related to social harms, mm -hmm. what the community is feeling about HIV vaccines, mm -hmm. as well as um, a way to access yeah. the media and the community and tell people mm -hmm. about uh, the progress of HIV vaccines mm -hmm. and what vaccines can and can't do. As, as Kevin mentioned, at this point, we do have to assume that the vaccines are going to be ineffective mm -hmm. until proven that they're effective. Right. That way people won't um, believe that they're protected when they're not really protected and have unsafe sex and therefore mm -hmm. thereby uh, mistakenly seroconvert. Well, thank you very much. We're going to be wrapping up this half hour relatively shortly. Is there anything in particular, one last statement that you would like to make? I know you're not going to be available for uh, the following week. Well, I just want to point out this is a very Phone exciting number. time for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that the vaccine testing starting in April mm -hmm. uh, will be successful and there will be mm -hmm. um, vaccines distributed to the general population in the near future. Is there a number the people can get a hold of you at? Um, actually, Project WIN mm -hmm. um, is, uh, can be accessed through uh, Denver General Hospital. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom, uh, Kevin. Thank you, Jan. Uh, we'll be covering another half hour in uh, uh, next week. Uh, unfortunately, Tom won't be able to meet it, but I thank all my guests. Uh, thank you very much.